Hey, welcome to Scalar. This is Arnav, your host for Refactor. Uh, welcome to yet another episode. And today we will be discussing what programming languages should you learn for 2023? Uh, scratch that. Uh, this is just clickbait. Uh, there shouldn't be videos called programming languages for 2023 because uh, the programming languages that you need to learn for 2023 are not different from what you should have done for 2022. Things don't change so fast, uh, but people do search like this programming language 2023. So here we are. Anyway, let's talk about it. What are the programming languages you should be learning today? And I will tell you two frameworks which you can use to decide that. One, which is I believe what kind of skills any good software developer should have. That should be uh, one of the factors which tells you what kind of languages or tech stacks you should learn in your career. The other is, let's also take a look at what gets used in the industry. And uh, in recent times, I have been talking to lots of CTOs, uh, engineering leads in a bunch of companies and trying to understand what their tech stack is. So let me give you a bit of idea on that as well. Okay. So very first of all, uh, let's talk about as a developer, uh, what um, I would say, in a metaphor, they say what arrows should be there in your quiver or, you know, uh, what sort of ammunition as a good software engineer, as a senior software engineer should you have? So A, I would say one object oriented language, uh, one of the, you know, old school classical object oriented languages you should definitely have mastered, which primarily means Java, but it could also be C sharp or objective C, uh, but any of uh, these large scale object oriented languages in which you know, following solid principles, doing low level design, using design patterns are very easy because it's actually designed for these type of languages only. And, and uh, they are wide uh, spread used inside industry, by the way, like languages like C++ or Java or C Sharp, uh, Objective-C, they are fairly widely used. So knowing one of these languages uh, is, is very important, should be there in, in your, you know, ammunition as an engineer uh, at all times. Second, knowing one of the uh, I would say uh, quick prototyping, scripting uh, type of language, which involves uh, the, the languages like JavaScript, Python, in, in some older languages like Ruby and uh, PHP as well, which, which have not really fallen out of fashion. There's still enough projects made in that. PHP, I would say, I don't know, maybe, maybe because not a lot of people think of it as a very good language, but I'm just saying that this is a bucket of languages like this, Python, Ruby, uh, JavaScript. You should know one of these languages as well so that you can quickly whip up some MVPs without having to set up too much project structure, which happens with one of the classical old school object oriented languages. You should also know one scripting language, which helps you with, uh, you know, let's say, you need to rename a lot of files, you need to move some stuff from here to there. Uh, in terms of scripting language, people can do a lot of those tasks using Python JavaScript type languages as well. But shell or bash scripting as it is called uh, in Linux environments, it's, it's very important to know that. Or some people have been doing a lot of scripting with languages like Perl as well, right? Uh, so any one of these languages is also uh, something that you should know, right? Then, uh, if you get a little more senior and you work with a lot of other things and when you work with some esoteric projects and all, learning one of the functional programming languages is also something that is uh, very useful. So like this whole family of Haskell, Lua, Clojure, Erlang also maybe. So any one of these languages. Now these languages are not very widely used in the industry, but these languages serve for very specific use cases like um, SCAD and, and architectural design and all, uh, computer aided design, Lua gets used there a lot. You know, Lisp is used uh, in, in a lot of places for creating compilers itself. And, uh, you know, Clojure, definitely a lot of people have been using that, uh, you know, and then they have very good uh, type safety as well. Purely functional way you can write programs. State management is much better. Uh, but those languages are more difficult to learn and maybe a little later stage in your career you can focus on. But if you have one of these languages in your bucket as well, then become a very good engineer. And there is actually a talk if you can search about called well-rounded engineer and that talks about this, uh, right? So you should definitely check that out as well. Uh, then let's talk a little bit about what is the industry uh, looking like, where are things going towards, right? So if you look at the industry today, uh, so first of all, Companies which deal with machine learning, uh, deep learning, transformer models, training on, on uh, sort of big data sets, all of that largely happens in Python because uh, in the Python, the ecosystem exists for a lot of these science and uh, numeric libraries like NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, uh, Keras, all of these things. So as a result of that, uh, and then creating Jupyter notebooks, which is easy to quickly visualize data sets and all. 
what has become is sort of python has become the lingua franca of the data science machine learning world so if if that's an industry that you want to go towards then i think i don't think you can ever evade python so python definitely is a language that you have to go for there used to be also stuff like you know matlab octave and all i think in production everybody is still doing everything in python all right next uh, the bfsi sector which is the banking and financial services uh, right in that sector and, and i'm talking about let's say large scale banks like a deutsche bank a bank of america uh, right uh, or or card companies like city or or visa mastercard right they all very heavily use uh, java even uh, hedge fund type companies like de shaw and jp morgan and uh, uh, goldman sachs uh, they all use java a lot sometimes they even have their own customized versions of java in places but java is fairly used there and that industry employs millions of engineers right and after that uh, sort of comes the more new age startup scene uh, especially let's say if you take in india any startup which is you know 1 billion dollar or large it's called unicorn sized uh, companies there what we will see is uh, their tech stacks uh, often times they start off with languages like django or with node js node js along with typescript fairly popular these days lots of uh, companies i know use that as uh, their backend tech stack recently i had seen i think uh, click up it's a uh, it's a task management app and and they have become a very big unicorn and they have very complex set of uh, things happening behind and they are all done in node js and typescript django obviously gets used a lot of places i mean youtube started uh, with with python as their backend and a lot of big projects use python right so django node js obviously gets used in startups as they scale though uh, one thing i have seen and i recently uh, was uh, interviewing kailash nath uh, from uh, zero dice the cto and he was talking about how they all also started out with python but as there were requirements of making highly concurrent systems where lots of requests will sort of come in and uh, creating single reusable binary so it's easy to deploy things their golang uh, gets used a lot officially the name is go really but a lot of people call it golang because that's the name of the website uh, the go language uh, right Uh, google created it uh, solves a lot of good purposes for highly scalable systems so uh, when i was at zomato uh, the backend was in php but it was migrating to go gojek uh, uses go and uh, hotstar also uses go uh, for a lot of their concurrent systems uh, while they do use java also in a lot of places in the backend and uh, zerota uses go for example like i was telling you about so go is something that startups when they reach a certain scale where they need a lot of microservices which are highly concurrent in nature they require uh, you know uh, golang in places and so go is also becoming uh, slowly slowly fairly popular c sharp by the way is a language that gets used a lot but in the service sector uh, because there are a lot of companies uh, working on a lot of microsoft stack of things asp dot net uh, based frameworks in the product world you will rarely see c sharp except in gaming companies so in the gaming companies uh, they use uh, you know frameworks like unity uh, where you can write your code in javascript and c sharp and a lot of people use c sharp because that's faster than javascript if you write uh, unity programs and c sharp is not so uncommon to see there so it's mostly c++ and c sharp in in the gaming community then there is the systems programming world where people are working on hardware that whole world would be c and c++ but slowly the the, the some of the newer companies are moving towards some new languages like there is rust and there is also this language called zig and google also recently created a new language called carbon these are fairly new languages it does not exist widely in the industry rust definitely there is a little bit of adoption c c++ obviously fairly widely used in any embedded systems uh, people building hardware like i'm i'm shooting this via uh, let's say a sony alpha camera inside that camera the firmware uh, that is written in c and c++ these kind of languages that are used there in routers in in lots of network devices uh, c++ based uh, firmware is getting used so that's sort of how the industry uh, looks like and then obviously missed out on mobile development so mobile development again most of it happens uh, in in uh, native uh, mobile development which is like writing in written the sdk of that particular os android and ios it would be happening back in the day in java and objective c respectively and now all of that has moved to kotlin and swift so apple created this language called swift uh, which is used for all ios development nowadays by the way swift can be used for backends as well just saying but nobody really uses that it's mainly used for ios only and uh, kotlin is a language created by this company called jetbrains which makes a lot of uh, great and famous ides 
uh, and Google has been collaborating with JetBrains, so it's it's a Google blessed language which is Kotlin, and nowadays all Android apps are written in Kotlin. And by the way, a lot of backends are also moving to Kotlin. People who are writing Java-based Spring Boot projects are starting to move to Kotlin. For example, when I write backend projects in uh, Java, technically I write them in Kotlin. I, I they run on JVM. They are using Java-based frameworks like Spring, but I actually write code in Kotlin. So when I say I work on Java backend, it's mostly Kotlin. And as the case with a lot of places, even Amazon, one of the biggest Java shops in the world, they have been um, you know starting to use uh, Kotlin. Uh, there was a uh, you know uh, interview very recently with James Gosling, the person who created Java, also was saying that yeah, there are places in in Amazon's tech stack where I'm having to use Kotlin because people are starting to move there. There are some companies who do use other JVM based languages like Scala as well. Uh, so Twitter had famously used it, uh, right? So so that also does happen uh, here and there. Not so widely used and not so popular. By the way, one of the great places to look at which type of companies are using what kind of languages and which kind of languages are more higher paying and all of that, you can obviously look at the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. So Stack Overflow publishes a developer survey every year. Uh, I think from 2010 or so, they have been publishing for 10, 12 years. Check out the Stack Overflow Developer Survey in 2022 and you will find a lot of idea about which languages have been growing, which languages are not growing so much, which kind of industries use what languages. Hopefully that gives you a bit of good bit of idea. So don't don't chase after you know any language just because somebody says that okay this is the brand new language that you as that you must learn in 2023. Don't go after that. Look at what's getting used in the industry. Also some languages which uh, are not new, like the language might have been invented 20 years back. So that's why it's not like a lot of influencers are talking about it today, but in the industry, maybe 50% of the projects are still built using that language, like Java for that case. So don't think that languages just because they are not, you know, new and trendy and people are talking about it does not mean it's not getting used in the industry, right? So take a choice based on that. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you will be learning a new language and, and as a software engineer, I generally tell, you know, in your career, every one or two years, you should pick up a new language and learn it. So go ahead, do that. All the best for that. And definitely subscribe to our channel for more such content. Thank you so much.